Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Avinash and in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some services related to account management, uh, right? So uh, generally, so the first question you may get in your interview is how many accounts you are managing and what are all those accounts and what is the purpose? So for that question, you can um, see most of the guys mention it as a one accounts or two accounts, but generally one accounts and two accounts is not at all sufficient to deliver a proper application. So de to deliver an application, so generally we need to have an account uh, for uh, doing all the POCs, all the testings, all the like, you know, the, the initial uh, uh, verifications and all for that we can use a trading account. So then we can use uh, develop development account or dev account for initial development. Uh, testing team, integration testing, uh, we can you have another account called uh, quality assurance account. So then you can uh, have an account that is similar to production called uh, UAT account. So then we can have production account. So these are standard accounts for technical things. And we have some central accounts also. So how you are going to manage all these accounts and how you are going to uh, pay the bill for these accounts and where the logs are going to store related to all these accounts. Right, for that, to maintain some network components from central location, we can use central networking account and central logging account. Uh, so the CloudTrail logs of all these accounts are going to stored in the central logging account. And this management account, the AWS organization and I, IAM identity center uh, actually enabled in this management account. We can um, uh, use AWS organizations and we can create OUs, we can create uh, some SCP service control policies to apply uh, some permissions or restrictions for all the remaining accounts that we call it as a management account. So we need at least these accounts to deliver or to talk about a standard AWS application deliveries. Right, so then like, you know, how exactly this AWS organization service help us for this multi-account architectures. So whenever you enable AWS organization in your AWS account, so we have an option to invite another AWS accounts or we can create uh, some another AWS accounts as part of this organization. So you can invite uh, if some all accounts already there or you can um, you can simply go and uh, create an account. So you can give what is account name and email ID, the role you want, you create an account. Same way you can add even 100 accounts also here. So all the 100 account uh, billing will come in this management account. Technically, we call this account as a management account. So that is a management account option. And also whatever the accounts you are adding here, if you want to maintain some hierarchy, right, you want to apply some set of permission to some group of accounts and some set of permission to another set of uh, accounts, we can create uh, a um, OU organizational units you can go here and you can uh, create an organizational units so this one i can call it as a management accounts and i can create a organization unit and uh, i can move these accounts to these organizational units so that i can apply some restrictions at this ou level or we can apply at this uh, root level also so what kind of uh, uh, permissions we can apply so basically we call it as a scp Right, we call it as a service control policy. You can enable service control policy on your organizations. Once you enable, you can start creating policies here and you can apply these policies at OU level or individual account level. So these permissions are going to be allowed or specifically denied. So that is what this SCP concept is. So, and how does central billing works? Whenever you are adding all your accounts here, all these accounts related billing will comes in this management account only. So we no need to log into each and every account to pay the bill. And also we have an IAM identity center. So now we are maintaining all these accounts. So do we need to have an IAM user in each and every account? No, not really required. Whatever the account we are, uh, uh, what in whatever the account we have this uh, AWS organization enable, we can depend on IAM identity center service so all the accounts we have added that will populate here, we can create uh, users, 
we can create users within this IAM identity center and we can uh, or we can create groups and we can add users to group and we can manage permissions at group level and what are all the accounts added we can allocate that users to these accounts while you are allocating you need to create a permission sets and that permission sets you need to apply to that accounts so so that like you know we can um, uh, use one user to log into multiple aws accounts so this actually AWS organizations will give central management, better security, simplified billing and improved compliance options, right? So yeah, so the next another management service is CloudTrail. For example, you have an account and uh, someone did something. Again, in interview, how you can expect a question related to the CloudTrail. They don't ask you question directly, what is CloudTrail and all. They will give you a scenario. Okay, you have an account and uh, you observe someone deleted an S3 bucket. You want to investigate or you have observed some production server is stopped. You need to investigate when it is stopped, who stopped from what IP address it got stopped. So if you want to investigate such type of uh, user activities or API calls, happen on your account so then you can depend on this cloud trail cloud trail is enabled by defaultly you no need to do any additional things but it stores last 90 days activities so if you want more than 90 days activities you need to create a trail so that trail again store all this information to the given s3 bucket so we can enable encryption for this trail and we can even enable log file validation so that we can see if anyone modified any logs and also we have three types of trail one is management trail this is aws console level operations data events this is related to lambda functions dynamo db api calls and some insight events this is related to unusual activity happening on our aws account so we can enable trails and we can store all these logs into an s3 bucket and if you want to filter something from all these logs see if you observe n number of the uh, activities happening here and i want to query something i want to add something i want to filter something so for that you have two options one is you can use this lookup attributes and you can for example i i'm really interested what exactly this avinash underscore t user is doing from right uh, from last uh, 30 minutes you can go with relative tomorrow absolute range for example today uh, at local time zone from 14 to 1459 apply it is going to show what exactly this guy is doing during this period so such type of lookup attributes we can use or we can simply create athena table and we can send all these and we can run queries there so to identify what exactly happening in our aws environment we can use this cloud trail and cloud trail is going to write all api calls all user activities but important thing is whatever operation happening inside our ec2 instances that won't uh, log here right so again all these logs are going to store in central uh, logging account if you are using multi-account architecture so even in if any external auditor visits our organization our project and if you want to verify all the logs so you no need to provide access on all these accounts in simple you provide access on this central account access that to whatever the bucket you are using for this trail purpose you gave read only access on that specific uh, uh, s3 bucket so that we are following that least privileges mechanism right then we have another service called aws uh, amazon config so basically this amazon config help us for two things one is we can set up uh, some compliance standards and second one we can get all the timelines of the resources right so for example this um, if you are taking config you may get interview questions in this manner you have an s3 bucket someone modified that s3 bucket and they made that s3 bucket as a public so you need to investigate which is uh, who made that bucket which bucket out of all buckets we have in this account which bucket uh, is non-compliant that is uh, not following our organizational compliance standard you want to verify that so for that we can uh, depend on this config again you can enable config recording and uh, within this config we have some options called rules you go and you add rules we have aws managed rules or custom lambda rules or we have an option called uh, guard with the help of guard also we can create uh, custom rules so now if you observe this aws managed rules we have 332 
so for example uh, i'm searching with this public um, snapshot public snapshot you see if anyone made any snapshot public we are going to treat it as a non compliant and we are going to get uh, and if you are taking about uh, bucket s3 bucket right uh, cloudtrail s3 data events enable to s3 if we are not following this again it is going to treat as a non compliant resource i'm searching with s3 and let's go to next screen s3 account level public access if we enable account level public access uh, s3 s3 bucket it is going to detect that and it is going to treat that as a non compliant resource so if you want to set up some rules and compliance standards we can depend on this config this is one advantage of uh, config and another one that um, um, we can get user timeline also so uh, whatever the resource we have here for example you want to filter one user activity when the user created when he is modified when another permissions added so if you want to get timeline for a specific resource like uh, aws resources users i am users right which user you want to test okay i'm going to pick this uh user pb user now you can see this configuration items and resource timeline it is going to give all information okay when the user is created when the configuration modified which configuration is modified it is going to show all that information again let me pick another user i hope i disable this user so this config service help us to get timeline of the resource as well as we can set up some standards right compliant resource and non compliant resource and again how it is going to get all this information so this config is going to work or read all the logs coming to cloudtrail then it is going to prepare that so in your interview if you get any question when someone made an s3 bucket public you want to get a notification you want to treat that as a non compliant resource so how we can achieve that and all so for that purpose you can use this uh, amazon config service or if anyone made any uh, s3 bucket public or if anyone made any ebs volume rds volume public or when an acm certificate is about to expire how you want to get notification for that also we can use this uh, amazon config service and we have one more service called trusted advisor so let's go to trusted advisor and before trusted advisor if you think of my videos are helpful if you are learning something new with the help of this videos right um, um, if my videos helps you to uh, crack any interview so please uh, uh, spare some time and please subscribe uh, to this youtube channel and uh, share with someone who is really working now let's come back to the technical thing so this basically trusted advisor is a service where aws is going to check our aws accounts for uh, cost optimization performance security fault tolerance and service limit so again this trusted advisor will just checks it won't fix any problems so again in interview you may get a question what support plan you are using in your project so this trusted advisor works according to the support plan so most of the uh, organizations prefer to go with the business support plan so we have basic support plan that is free no technical support we have a developer support plan so we are going to get um, um, assistance over the uh, email only but within 12 to 24 hours our issue is going to pick up that to during local business hours so then we have business uh, support plan we are going to get assistance within 1 hour so 24 by 7 support with phone email chat support and we have another one like uh, enterprise on ramp and enterprise support plan so that cost is uh, 15000 us dollars and if it is enterprise on ramp it just 5500 us dollars right so we are going to get um, uh, dedicated support and we can add multiple accounts we can use that for multiple uh, aws accounts also the enterprise support plans but this basic developer business support plan applicable for one individual aws account all right so now when coming to the trusted advisor this checks comes with a base based on the support plan we are using as i am under basic support plan it is not giving all the advices so in your project what support plan you are using for that question your answer should be uh, business support plan 
right? So that we are going to get all the trusted Azure checks as well as we can get uh, uh, quick responses whenever we are raising any ticket to AWS. So again, cost optimization, it will give any over provision resources, right? Uh, that resource we are not actually using idle empty load balancers. And when coming to the performance, under provision resources, security, which area we can improve the security? Do we have any public snapshots? Do we have any S3 bucket permissions? So that we can, and uh, fault tolerances, whether we are using uh, our load balancer across multiple availability zones or not, RDS multi-AZ enabled or not, versioning enabled or not, right? Uh, such type of all checks we are going to get and service limit also we are going to get. But remember, trusted advisor don't help us uh, to fix any of the issues, right? So that is trusted advisor. So these services we can use for uh, uh, account uh, management, account governance and account auditing purpose, account uh, compliance purposes, right? And account uh, improvements. So that is the reason I'm calling all this as a uh, management uh, services. Okay, I hope uh, you find this video helpful. Please, um, spare some time and even uh, practice the services to gain more knowledge on the services. Thanks for taking some time to uh, complete this video. See you again in next video. Thank you.